this being your first official solo album as Sean Jackson, like, what were you trying to get out, get off your chest with this one? Um, I really, I really was just focused on. I just wanted to make a dope album, like. Like, I always love West Coast albums and their style of making albums, or the classic West Coast albums. Anyway. And I thought no other coast or MC outside of the West could really capture or make it theatrical like Cats did out here for some reason. So that was like my motivation when I came out here. Like, that's why it's such a cohesive theme throughout the album. And it's actually a plot to the album. But overall, I just kind of wanted to give you the MC side of me before I gave you like the personal side of me. Like I wanted to deal with it like we would deal with each other in a, in, in meeting for the first time. I, I don't want to be like, hey, what's up? I'm Sean Jackson. When I was nine years old, I did this, this, and this. Like, nah. I much rather we fill each other out than I give you that. So my next album, we hear a lot more personal stuff. But this it was definitely more focused on entertainment, MC, and just trying to make a dope hip hop album. You know? Um, I was curious, what's the, what was up with the, 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 there's a theme of the guy from Providence ah, keep yeah, popping up, like is that based yeah. on a, on a real character? Or? Well, that's, that's really my man Japan from Providence, and, and the bouncer dude is Double K for people under the stairs, and what, basically that whole skit is saying I'm from both places, I'm from Providence and L.A., I just wanted to show you the difference in between both areas, like they couldn't even understand each other the whole album, to let you know what kind of complex mind you're dealing with. Like, I'm balanced with those two things that don't even match, or, you know what I mean? So, it was my own personal little thing in there I wanted to throw in there. I got a couple of tidbits in there way for people to figure out and catch up on, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what song on the album do you feel really represents you best as an MC? As an MC? Probably, I would say backstage. It's, uh, that was like, I wrote that one from the gut, man. I came out here, I don't want to say I was bitter, but I felt like, you know, was, I got a lot of love when I came out here. And I got a lot of funny cats, man. It was kind of like on some Hollywood shit. Nah. You swear to me? Cool. Yeah, nah. Uh, and you know, I don't even trip on that, but. It was just kind of like, all right, man, hold on. You know, a lot of these cats are your favorite rappers, too. <laughs> I mean, like, they're funny dudes. Like, but, you know, I mean, it was just on the thing, like, you know, I'm a person built or focused more on building than destroying, man. I'm not trying to come out here and take over your territory. Like, I don't, none of that's my concern, man. I'm just trying to create my own lane, do my own thing. And, you know, a lot of cats felt threatened because they were insecure about their own talents or whatever. So they would act funny. And backstage, the lyrics are about that. Me coming here, getting fronted on by certain people. So that one I really wrote from the gut. I meant it. And it has like an old school feel with the beat. I felt like lyrically I kind of brought the essence of Sean Jackson out. You know what I mean? So I would say that would be backstage. Okay. Um, and also, like, what, what's, what's the uh, Detroit connection? I know you had like Guilty and Tarak and Big Tone. It's funny, they, they're all relationships I built out here, you know, like, all of them are, they either live in L.A. or they're constantly in L.A., and Tarak is a friend of mine, um, I didn't even know Big Tone was going to be on the album, Tarak just happened to lay his verse in the D, and Big Tone just dropped the hook on him, so that's how that worked out, Guilty, I just met out here randomly, I know how she is, he's another vessel to a lot of these Detroit cats, but Shoes brought Guilty over to the crib one day, man. I had the, I had the De La Hoya fight last year. And Guilty ends up at my house. So it's kind of like, yo, you should be down. And she's down. So, yeah. yeah, it's like I either know them or I know them through people. Oh, so. well, cool, man. I think that's pretty much all the questions I had. Is there anything that you wanted to add in there? Or? Yo, New Jack Hustle, October 21st. Tress Records, sound check. Uh... Many more videos. We got a Man Up video about to come soon. Directed by Hilton Carter. Other than that, man, 
Oh, we have Boner Jams 08. I don't know if people have heard that. Get ready for Stoner Jams 09, man. Drop it for 2009. So what's, what's with the Boner Jams in? Oh, you ever heard that one? Nah. Oh, man. It's a whole podcast of just like raunchy raps, man. I'm not, I'm not too, too short with it, but I'm kind of like... Just raunchy, immature. I, I did it just, it started off as a joke, and it's like, what can I do that an 11 year old kid somewhere would just Google up and Sean Jackson would just pop up? And then I thought of the word boner, and I was like, yo, let's go with boner jams away. And that's what happened. And where can people find it? Uh, I mean, if you Google it up, a lot of people, a lot of sites are hosting the podcast, so it's a free download. Pick it up. Okay, and Stoner Jams is coming next. Stoner Jams 09 will drop 420 2009. <laughs> so, that should be pretty crazy, man. It's obviously a weed podcast. Every year we're going to keep this thing going, man. See what happens. Okay. And then to, uh, to keep the Providence LA uh, continuum going, let's talk about the weed. LA weed to Providence weed. Oh, is it even man, comparable? It's not, it's not even comparable. <laughs> I mean, one thing we got out there in Providence is, I think we got a lot of good Canadian weed that comes through. But, come on, man, this is, this is like the mecca of this shit, man. It's, it don't compare. It doesn't compare. It hits, though, it smells different. Like, it, it, it don't compare. Don't compare. Any other, like, funny, like, out kind of smoke, like, swishers? Is it different over there? Or? Hell yeah, man. What are yeah. some of those funny differences? Yeah, man. Uh, that is funny you say that, man. Don't buy it. If, you, if you're from the East Coast and you come to Cali, don't buy a Dutch Master. Man. One, you can only find it in pharmacies. The reason I say don't buy them is because nobody buys them. They're not fresh at all, man. So you'll be wasting your money if you come out from Dutchess. You just got to kind of play the game, get down with the Optimos, and the Swishers and shit, man. <laughs> You're all right, man. You don't come out here with the leaves and shit, man. People ain't really fucking with it out here. I miss it, though. But when I go out there, I smoke my Dutchess. I, I hear I roll with Swishers, man. Roll Swishers? It's totally different, man. Yeah. It's got great flavors and all shit, man. It's like now, ladies. So you're to the flavors, though? I normally roll with great. If I go with Optimal, I do Beach. I don't know why I do the flavors, things like it's not crazy about them. Sometimes they give me a headache, but I don't know. They're, they're very convenient here, so I want to smoke now, actually. I should have bought some weed. <laughs> oh, well, looks, she's, like, yeah, she's looking up. Even the workers, she want to smoke. But yeah, man, um, that's about it, man. If you ain't got first of all, please go get it. Um, put my all into it. I think it's something you might like, man. If you love hip-hop, you might feel this shit.